Hello, everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode of Mastering Midlife, How to Thrive When the World Asks the Most of You. I am your host, Mark Silverman. These bonus episodes are where I get to talk about the insights I'm gleaning from the conversations and the interviews I've been having, about uh, insights from the books that I read, uh, my own writings and my own thoughts uh, and the, the work that I do so that I can share it with the world. And I really, really appreciate that you actually listen and comment and give me feedback on what I'm sharing. These are going to be the chapters in the book, Mastering Midlife. So any feedback is always welcome. So today the conversation is kind of focused on uh, feeling like a fraud, feeling derivative, feeling like you steal from other people. Uh, on my way to the first time I was giving the Mastering Midlife keynote, I was in the car with one of the other speakers and I had my, my talk ready to go and I was gonna give it a few times over the, over the, over the course of a couple of days. Uh, and, and the woman in the back seat, who is a good friend of mine, says, hey, Mark, I just saw this article from Brene Brown on midlife. Would you like me to read it to you? Uh, no, I'm about to go on stage, and I really don't want to hear what Brene Brown has to say about midlife. But, of course, I said yes. And, of course, it was brilliant and passionate and raw and eloquent and useful and everything I would hope that I could talk about. So comparing myself to Brene Brown, how can I go possibly go on stage when, when she just shared, as far as I was concerned, the definitive version of mastering midlife and what the challenges are and what you need to do in order to be able to function in this time of life, let alone thrive. Uh, and I did go on stage, and it's a good thing I don't listen to my head. Uh, and I incorporated some of the wisdom that she had in my talk. It was, it was really cool. By the time I gave my second talk, I had found my voice and what it is I want to uh, impart. It's funny because I just heard the Mark Maron interview with Brene Brown uh, last week. And I, was, I, did, I went to the same exact place. Mark Maron is a former comedian. He's one of the top podcasters in the world. He's got a great voice. He's got a great way. And his chemistry with Brene Brown was just hysterical. They talked about meaty really useful subjects. I'm going to put the uh, links in the show notes so that you guys can hear this. But again, why am I doing a podcast when uh, all these other people in the world are doing these incredible podcasts and they're all covering such great topics? Uh, again, if I listen to the critics in my head, I will never speak. I will never create my own stuff. Now, that brings me back to quite a few weeks ago when I was uh, listening to Pandora and I heard, uh, I say a little prayer for you, that uh, Dionne Warwick classic, only this time it was by Aretha Franklin. And it was incredible. The passion, the soul, that voice, it was unbelievable. And I immediately felt sorry for Dionne Warwick. How could Dionne Warwick ever sing that song again? How could, how could she ever show her face in public when Aretha Franklin sang that song? And it didn't take me long to realize that that was just a perfect lesson for me. Dionne Warwick gets to sing the song. Aretha Franklin gets to sing the song. Anybody gets to sing the song. And the fans will, will come and the fans won't. Uh, but the expression is what's most important. Uh, I had a, uh, this past week, one of my guests, one of my favorite people in the world, Chris Colbert, uh, he's coming, he came on to speak about innovation and he came on to speak about how we must innovate, evolve in midlife. And it just so happens, he said, by the way, Mark, I'm writing a book. Would you like, you know, would you be willing to read it uh, and give me pointers since I'm a published author? Absolutely. So I'm reading the book and the book is on midlife. It's about, it's about innovating in midlife. His book is so eloquent. It's called This Is It, and it's coming out actually this week, so that's going to go in the show notes too, and also you really listen, need to listen to the episode with Chris. But I thought, again, Chris wrote the freaking book that I'm writing, that I want to write. It's so good. And again, it made me want to not publish my own book. And again, I have to go through the mental gymnastics to realize that my thoughts are not my friend. My beliefs are not my friend. I have something to create. I have something to say. You have something to create. You have something to say. If it feels derivative, you think it's derivative, maybe it is. Maybe you learned it someplace and you're alchemizing it the way you want to alchemize it. Nothing I say is, is new. I steal from Steve Chandler all the time. I steal from Brene Brown. I steal from Simon Sinek. I steal all the time. And then I use that and, and, and bring it forth in my voice. This podcast is a creation of mine. Uh, whether I touch on themes other people touch on, whether they do it better, whether I, you know, it doesn't really doesn't matter. It's my job to show up to create 
and let the world decide what it wants to do with it. That's how I, that's how I go about my coaching. That's how I go about my speaking. That's how I go about workshops. That's how I go about my books, anything. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to stifle and I'm not going to do anything. Uh, to borrow from Brene again, to get into the arena, to get bloody uh, and to get uh, willing to uh, go toe to toe with my creative energies. Uh, thank you for listening. I love that you guys listen to these solo podcasts again. Thank you for the feedback, for, for the insights uh, that really helps and it's going to help with the chapters in the book. I love you and have a great rest of the day.